And so that's basically what orchestration is. And it's something that you do as a composer while you're working with your ideas. You come up with a melody, you have a foreground, then you come up with a background. How do you assign these out into sounds that you want to use? <laughs> is basically assigning instrumental or vocal or sound colors to musical ideas. You can write out a melody on a piano and it could be done a hundred different ways. That could have been a clarinet solo, it could have been a flute solo, it could be violin one and two plus first flute and oboe, uh, it could be any pairing. So the idea is you have this musical line, how best to express it in instrumental colors uh, with uh, timbral qualities. And so that's basically what orchestration is. And it's something that you do as a composer while you're working with your ideas. You come up with a melody, you have a foreground, then you come up with a background. How do you assign these out into sounds that you wanna use? And it's also the job of somebody who was an orchestrator for a long time like me. You take a composer's work, they have a lot of pre-written material. They, they've shown you how they want to you know, put down in the orchestra, but you may also realize, well, there's also a little room to add more to warm up that line or maybe take some other things away to make it a little cooler, um, just knowing what they're trying to do. Um, and, and the reason orchestrators exist are, is because production schedules are just so crazy. A composer can't always be their own orchestrator to MIDI everything out in mock-up form, clean it all up, then go orchestrate the full scores and print all the parts themselves. So um, orchestrators are a very valuable um, <laughs> asset to the film music industry. But today we're really gonna be focusing on you assigning musical colors to your parts and your music. And orchestration is one of those things where there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's just endless possibilities for how you could assign colors. But that said, there are also very right and very wrong things you can do. Um, and we'll go over some of those, those traps. Orchestration requires really good musical instinct and very good ears. And you develop those by knowing lots of orchestral music. You have to spend a lot of time over a lot of years really consuming a lot of orchestral music from the classics through all the really great film scores. Um, the Golden Age film scores will teach you immense amounts about how orchestration goes and uh, <laughs> what really excellent high-skilled orchestration sounds like. Um, so over time, you need to absorb as much orchestral music as you can, even all the modern hybrid stuff to just develop an ear for how to best layer your mock-ups in addition to layering your mock-ups, how to layer those in with all the live recorded parts of the orchestra. And it just takes time in listening. Um, and what we're not gonna talk about today are all the specifics of, okay, here's a flute, here's the range of notes, here are the colors in each different range you're going to get. Uh, in the future, I'd like to do a much more in-depth instrumentation and orchestration tutorial where we get into the granular elements and mechanics of different instruments. Uh, but today we're gonna talk more about just what I said before, how are we going to blend colors for you to use in your music right away? So today I've got some principles lined up that will hopefully help you on that journey to, to balancing orchestral sounds with your musical ideas. When I'm developing an idea when trying to assess like the tone and the environment and the atmosphere of a film, I try to isolate what those concepts are uh, in the story and try to recreate them in an instrumental, colorful way. If you'd like to learn more film scoring tips like these, sign up for free and I promise you, these lessons will help you on your journey to becoming an accomplished film composer.